Civil pasturing can be approached from two directions. We can be adding pasture into the trees or trees into our pastures. We're using black locusts to try and create more civil pasture areas in our open pastures. One of the advantages of black locusts is that it acts more like a hardy pioneer species, so it can tolerate competition from sod better than most other hardwood species can. It's also clonal, meaning it spreads through its root system. So when a parent tree is harvested or dies, it'll send up suckers like the ones behind me. And looking to the left, there's some locust trees which were girdled. They were too crooked for fence posts. This was a black locust plantation that we harvested a few years ago for fence posts. The trees that were not straight enough for fence posts were girdled and left versus cutting them down. If we cut them down, we would have a lot of debris on the ground, which would be an impediment for the grazing. We girdled those trees. They sent up suckers, which have spread across the fence and start extending out into these open pastures here. So locust is a species that we can use to establish just a few trees in an area and then over time through the right management allow them to spread out. This area has still been grazed over the past few years but because we're only grazing a day at a time in each paddock with long rest and recovery periods between grazing the locusts are able to gradually outgrow the browsing from the cattle. This is a 20-year-old mixed conifer plantation. We planted Japanese and European larch, Douglas fir, white pine, and Norway spruce in this area. We planted this just to fill in an old farm field that we no longer plan to grow hay on with trees. For the past 10 years, we've managed it as a silvo pasture. When we started grazing this, it was starting to revert back heavily to multiflora rose and honeysuckle and other invasive plants. Through grazing now we've been able to shift it back to a nice grass understory. In the background here you can see the Douglas fir has been hit by rhabdocline needle cast in the last five years, which is, uh, it doesn't kill the Douglas fir, but it, it severely impacts their growth. The lesson that we've learned here on our farm is to not just rely on one or two species, but rather try and have a diversity of species growing, not, o not only in our native woodlot civil pastures, but in our plantation civil pastures as well, because periodically we have more insects and diseases and pests showing up here that affect some of the trees that we're, we're trying to cultivate. I think the biggest consideration if you're starting uh, in pasture and planting trees is to consider the, the sort of successional nature of the tree when it shows up. So early successional trees will naturally find themselves in fields and actually the root systems can better coexist with the grasses. Um, and so we find in our fields like red alder, uh, black locust, uh, ash, uh, some of these trees that are naturally found in, in those successional stages when a field is going into a forest tend to root better especially the nitrogen fixing trees, so the alders and the locusts just really do well. Uh, versus something like sugar maple and oak, a lot of those are used to more forest conditions and so you have a natural kind of competition and um, trees that have shallow root systems like sugar maple or some of the pines, sometimes you have a trouble establishing those in grass versus ones that have a tap root or have more extensive root systems and can can adapt. So again, it's really matching, you know, matching your species to that kind of environment. And I think that um, that's a pretty important factor. And we found that not doing that, you know, we lose almost all of our trees. And when we pay attention to that, almost all of them survive. So, you know, it makes it really worth it to think about that ahead of time.